Hello everyone and welcome to this video which is basically in relation to the one which I show the motion projection improvements in OpenXR. So really the purpose of this video is to explain what motion projection is in terms of my understanding of it because guys I am not a very technical person when it comes to all of the jargon and maybe that's a good thing because I'll be able to explain it in a way that us flight simmers can understand it. <laughs> and also when I use it and when I don't because I'm not saying that motion projection is the second coming and I use it all the time. There are some negatives as well as some positives. Also as part of this video I'm going to show you my current settings, my Nvidia settings, <laughs> my driver that I'm using and my OpenXR settings. So let's start okay with OpenXR okay which I will link in the description below because many people don't know what it is or where to find it so please just follow the link in the description below. Think of OpenXR as an API for sort of the middle man you know when it comes to your VR settings much like Steam VR and Oculus when you fiddle around with all the settings including you know the resolution and refresh rate and all that kind of stuff this is the OpenXR platform which I use and recommend using for Microsoft Flight Simulator if you are a reverb user and that is the G1 and G2 perhaps even the Samsung Odyssey Plus but I'm really thinking here about the reverb uh, folks out there with this particular video you really should be using OpenXR Windows Mixed Reality don't use Steam VR for Microsoft Flight Simulator uh, because it's not as good okay you can change that in your registration folder. if you go here and go reg edit registry editor um, hopefully that will come up and you can see here this is my path that I am using for the active runtime for Microsoft Flight Simulator I also have an Oculus headset so I have this set which is doing nothing by the way and if I ever want to use the Oculus headset I just copy that like this and then put it into this description here and then that changes my runtime to the Oculus but I won't do that today because I'm using the reverb. I've shown that on quite a few number of videos please let me know in the comments if you want me to be a little bit more specific about that but it's the first thing is to make sure that the reverb is using mix, the mixed reality runtime okay and then what happens is is it's linked in with this open XR runtime so when you get to this section here developer settings People ask me as well, what's preview mode? It doesn't exist. What are you talking about? It does, guys. It's right at the top here. It's this little tab. Use latest preview OpenXR runtime. At the moment, at the time it's recording, you need to have that on to enable this wonderful new motion projection setting, which I will explain in a moment. I also recommend that you change your customized render scale slider. You basically manually adjust it because if you, for me personally, right, I have an RTX 3090. So that's actually a bad thing in this case because if I let it do its thing, it goes, "Oh, you've got a 3090. Okay, well, you know, maximize your uh, uh, resolution to 100%. And if that's at 100%, I don't, I, I really lose. In fact, it's done it. Look, <laughs> it's done it there. At 100%, I lose a lot of frames. So I set that to 70%. Okay, which I can hardly tell the difference in the render image of the uh, the pixels." If I go any lower than 70, I notice, even at 65, I notice a difference. So 70 is a sweet spot. And then in your sim, you set that to 100%. That is my optimum setting. I have had that now for quite a while. I really recommend that you keep that setting uh, to 70% OpenXR, 100% render scale. If you have a high-end system, if you don't, if you've got an 8600K type machine, 1080 Ti machine, which I ha also have, by the way, and I use Microsoft Flight Simulator with that system. Not as much as I used to, but I do use it. Then set the renders, keep that to 70%, but uh, take this back to 70. You will lose the visual clarity. That's just the way it is, guys. You know, a 1080 Ti card is fantastic, but it's getting a bit long in the tooth. So I would recommend 70%. Right, okay. So that's the kind of resolution side of things out of the way. This is the big one here, right? Motion projection. Now, I'm going to tell you how I use the sim, okay? This is how 
this is when I, when I have motion projection on is if I'm doing a local tour I'm low to the ground I'm in VFR mode because there's one thing about motion projection that always occurs it will you will lose a bit of visual clarity it won't be as sharp with it off and that's because um, it's projecting the frames so the text is gonna just look a little bit more blurred I mean it's it's very slight and particularly if you're running a 70% if you can get away with it which you can now by the way uh, because of this 22.5 frame rate limitation which I'll also explain in a minute so it's 70% open XR 100% render scaling if you have motion projection enabled that will give you a fourth frame I was wrong in my recording uh, it's not a third frame, it's a fourth frame. And But what is motion projection? Well, basically, it enables additional frames so it improves the fluid motion of the scene. So, really, we need to be running at 90 frames per second, okay? With a uh, Reverb G2's uh, uh, refresh rate of 90 hertz, we need to be running this sim at 90 frames per second in VR. It's never going to happen. It's never going to happen, not anytime soon, anyway until the uh, the 6090 Ti is released <laughs> so no chance okay so we've got to use motion projection in order for the system to produce fake frames so at 45 frames per second it will need to produce one frame in order to uh, sort of give you the illusion that you are running at 90 because the whole point of motion projection is to give you a simulated uh, well, a simulation of 90 frames per second so in the past windows mixed reality has always been behind uh, oculus oculus can go down to 20 frames per second uh, and windows mixed reality could only do 45. then at the time of the uh, microsoft flight simulator vr release open xr uh, changed that to 30 frames per second and i've got loads of videos on that that was a massive game changer but even at 30 frames per second with these kind of settings that i'm running I can actually run at 30 frames per second, if I'm honest, uh, with my spec. I've got a 10900K RTX 3090, so if you've got that kind of spec, you should be able to run these kind of settings, which are crazy high, at 30 frames per second. But even me, at places like Farnborough, uh, perhaps South End, and really hot, like New York, photogrammetry, 30 frames per second is even a tall order for my system. So because of that, I'm pleased to tell you that OpenXR have now extended their motion projection, I guess, bandwidth to a fourth frame. So you can now go half of 45. So you now have 22.5 frames per second and you have 45 frames per second. You've also got 30 frames per second uh, and there's probably one higher than 45 as well, but that doesn't matter because you're never going to reach that. So, you know, just don't worry about it. In those scenarios, the fluid motion is absolutely amazing on the ground it feels incredibly just lifelike to me you know i've done a lot of flying in real life and it reminds me when i look down on the ground and see the terrain moving across it's fantastic if you have that disabled because i hear people moaning all the time about stuttering and ghosting you are always going to get it unless you are running 90 frames per second you are always going to get jittering stuttering and ghosting it's just going to happen because you are not at that native refresh rate okay the upshot is though is that there's times where I actually have motion projection disabled say an instance if I'm flying this CRJ on a long-haul flight where I need that excellent clarity I will bump this up to 100% or maybe you know between 80 and 100 even if you leave it at 70 it's still amazing but say 80% okay motion projection disabled I'll leave every I don't touch this guys I never touch this anymore these are my settings I leave that as they are and with those settings with motion projection disabled okay I get a better clarity trouble is I do get ghosting but if I'm not low to the ground if I'm not doing crazy turns I'm not gonna notice it so much it's it is there but it's not so bad now what are the good things about disabling motion projection? You're not going to get any wavering or artifacts. That, that you know, not going to get anything like that at all. Which I know loads of you hate, especially the prop, you know, with the artifact. It happens, and on the struts as well. When you look down, uh, you can see that. Um, personally, for me, I don't mind that if I'm if I'm flying with my head outside the cockpit. It's fine. 
but for sort of long haul flights I will have that disabled. I hope that kind of clarifies this some a, a few things guys and by the way if you make sure that's what I'm running so far okay that's this is the at the time it's recording that's the OpenXR developer tool I'm, I'm running if you want to check go to your MS store go to downloads and updates and if you've got anything in here because my win, uh, mixed reality portal has just been updated as well yesterday it will show in here look OpenXR for Windows Mixed Reality that was modified yesterday as well to that just basically get updates and it will update it all for you from the Microsoft store okay that's really important as well so really to recap yeah recap <laughs> use preview mode customize your render scale slider I'd recommend 70% and depending on the flying you're doing if you're doing aerobatics or you're doing VFR I would recommend motion projection enabled okay because you can now go to a fourth frame 22.5 frames per second that is a massive deal it's fantastic and I'm so I want to congratulate Microsoft uh, for adding this in because this means that we are now on par with the Oculus software which used to always have you know the it used to be the king for ASW motion projection and if you hear people say in asynchronous time warp motion projection you know uh, motion smoothing all of those things mean the same thing currently Steam VR does not have this ability for the reverb if you're running an index you have the support from Steam VR to do the same thing as this and it will go down to low frame rates but for the reverb community you need to be using open XR remember that registry make sure that the uh, mixed reality runtime is in your active in fact what I'll do yeah I'll put this in a, a description below this because you need this link here okay that's important I really don't think anyone with a reverb should be using Steam VR for Microsoft Flight Simulator this is specific to this sim guys it will not work with DCS or IL2 or even X-Plane because it uses Steam VR okay that is a whole separate can of worms right there <laughs> So is that any clearer guys? I hope so. If not, I'll make another video until we get this right. But they are my settings. This, my sim settings are incredibly high now. That's my reverb just gone to sleep. Uh, they're like crazy high. In fact, I, I did a test the other day. I can run everything on ultra now because, you know, with that 22.5 frames per second, it makes everything, you've got such a lower threshold. Basically, you've got now seven and a half frames per second back, okay? Uh, in fact, it'll be, it's a bit more than that because to run at 30 frames per second, you need to be running higher, about 32 frames, to get that motion projection. It is a bit technical, guys, but that's the best way I can describe it, really. Um, it really is fantastic. There are good things and bad things about motion projection. It's not perfect, far from it. And when it changes from 22.5 to 30 frames per second mode, it does stutter at the moment. It gets a bit confused and you'll get the odd juddering. But to be honest, guys, you're never going to get rid of it completely. If you are on the quest for, pardon the pun, for the best stutter-free experience, you, you're not going to be able to do it. Not even with the latest hardware. You're always going to get stutters. I think Aeroflight FS2 is the only sim that I know of that completely eliminates any stutters. And even then, that might stutter every now and then. I don't know. But you, know, you just don't get too obsessed with it, okay? It's not healthy. <laughs> oh, dear. It's funny, I was, I was recording uh, uh, some video footage of the chipmunk I flew in the other day, in real life, and even my video on my phone uh, stuttered in 4K mode, it had a little stutter in it. <laughs> That's real life, obviously recording off a phone. So, you know, it's just one of those things that we have to deal with for VR. If you're running in 2D mode, you still get stutters. What we're doing, this sim is so complex, it's doing the most difficult tasks you can ever imagine a computer can handle. Uh, VR with so much going on underneath. Anyway guys, I'm going to leave that there. Uh, a bit of a, just a raw sort of unedited video. I hope it's of some use to you and explains what motion projection is. It's an amazing uh, feat that Windows Mixed Reality has now got this frame rate so low. Um, what we need next guys is a way of locking the frame rate to 22.5. Uh, if there is a tool out there that someone knows of, please let me know in the comments and I'll check it out. Because I know if you, some of you oldies on the channel, because you know I haven't done any X-Plane videos for a while, uh, I used to use the OVR tool and lock my frame rate down to 20 frames per second. 
What that means is the frames will never go higher than that, which makes the image really smooth and it stops the motion projection jittering between modes. Which, that's what we need next. That's the next thing. <laughs> so until then, have a good one guys, have a great weekend, and I'll see you all again very soon. Bye bye for now. And like an absolute noob, I almost forgot to show you my NVIDIA settings. Well, this bit of the video is going to be very simple. I can't actually believe how long this has ended up to be, but I guess it is a technical uh, subject. But you'd be pleased to know, my NVIDIA settings, if you want to copy mine, feel free to try your own thing. I set everything at default apart from one thing, that is the texture filtering quality. I changed that to performance because I notice quite a substantial uh, difference, up to five frames per second in VR with that on performance. All the other stuff I've tried, guys, like everybody else, you know, I've scoured the forums and social media groups, tried vertical sync, uh, virtual pre-rendered frames and clamping or filtering and God knows what. And, but it, none of it makes a difference. In fact, one thing I will say, I actually will say, the power management mode, when I set that to prefer maximum performance, I actually find that the sim stutters more. So I leave it at optimal power. Whether that's right or wrong, guys, I don't know. But this is these are my settings. Also, hags, okay? Um, if you type, uh, go into your search bar and put GPU scheduling or just GPU graphic settings, I have mine on. I also have game mode on, okay? I have no noticed no difference uh, with game mode on or off, but I have noticed hags um, does make a difference. And I'm still running the old driver 457-30. Uh, if I can find out, does it tell you here? Yeah, 457-30. There we go. Right, hopefully if you're still with me, well done. I'm impressed. Um, go have a lie down, maybe have a stiff drink, and then come back. <laughs> and then if any of that has been any help, please let me know in the comments, and I'll see you all again very soon. I'm definitely going now. Bye-bye for now. Take care.